During World War II, blue water ships and prop planes fought in some of the most ferocious battles against each other across the seas. But today, two almost different time periods collide, where we'll find out how well these sea monsters of World War II, with their sometimes 30 to 90 anti-air guns they carry each, can do against the more modern world of jets and their technological advances. Will World War II's ocean titans remind the air of what they're capable of, or will the advances of technology Technology and jets teach us something new. Today, we see what this will look like. We'll be doing three rounds. For our first match, we'll see what 12 World War II Blue Water ships can do against 19 jets. Round two will go into a night battle and either increase or decrease either side depending on the outcome. And for our last round of chaos, we'll see just what devastating results would happen in an all-out 64 participant World War II Blue Water Fleet vs. Jets battle with infinite respawns in a 15 minute time period. Let's see how round one goes. For these rounds, we let our participants choose any jet they wanted, which could entail a range from Germany's first jet fighter, the ME-262, first flown in April 1941, up to an F-16 or MiG-29. When taking a look at some of the pre-1950s AA with manual or mechanical fire, we noticed with War Thunder's AI abilities in control sniping jets from over a kilometer away, which seemed crazy. But I understand there's also reports of British ships taking out Argentinian jets with antiquated World War II 40mm and 20mm anti-air autocannons during the Falklands War, so who knows? In War Thunder, players have the ability to switch from the computer doing the targeting and shooting for you to manually using their AA guns. However, when some players tried this, they weren't nearly as successful. Giving credit where credit's due, a player by the name of Miles Sparvus that had extensively tested out the naval vs. jet abilities on War Thunder posted on the game's forum site that it was observed if jets kept their speed above 700 kilometers an hour at 3,000 meters, the only real threat was heavy AA. Above 2,000 meters, light and medium AA will have trouble tracking you, but there's still a good chance they'll hit. And at 1,000 meters and under, it's a bit of a crapshoot. Outside of War Thunder's AI AA abilities, it was incredible incredible watching how devastating some of the jet's weaponry effects had on the ships, such as napalm, the accuracy of dropping bombs from over 4,000 meters and easily hitting their targets, whereas in World War II, dive bomber crews were expected to at least hit 50% of their bombs within 25 meters or 27 yards of the center of a target. Four minutes in, with 13 jets left and six World War II Blue Water ships left. Finishing round one with 12 jets left and all blue water ships sunk, I thought it was weird seeing how many of the missiles being fired at these ships from some of these more modern jet fighters would miss such large targets. 
We now take our battle into the night where 20 ships with War Thunder's AI AA will take on our 20 Jet Team participants. Let's see how round two goes before our epic round of chaos. Another observation made by Miles Sparvis during research with Naval vs. Jets is that in War Thunder when testing this while going Mach above 3,000 meters made the jet untouchable to AA, or the AA simply didn't even engage when it wasn't under attack by another ship. The accuracy of these AA guns was just entertaining to watch as it was also a bit of a learning experience for some of our contestants during this event as well. this out we actually needed to do five rounds as War Thunder servers seem to have issues and sometimes games would badly lag causing us to completely need to redo a round. Finishing the round with it only being about 3 minutes due to tickets bleeding out with 14 ships destroyed and 10 jets down. We now go into our final round for Fun Chaos where we include a full room of 64 participants to battle it out in an all jet vs blue water ship scenario. Let's see what chaos this brings.
all in all, the end result in real life after doing much research and witnessing what was capable in War Thunder is that many jet fighter players that knew what they were doing, even with AI, AA on, could easily stay out of reach of the World War II naval fleet guns while still knocking out as many ships as they almost could carry missile and bomb-wise proving the reason why the sea monsters of its time period had become obsolete and the need for most of them faded away. Warships nowadays are much smaller and have much better AA technology such as the use of SAM missiles. The amount of money and resources needed to build ships this big nowadays and fight is not effective compared to the weaponry of jets are capable in easily destroying its targets from long distance drops or missiles. Let's find out what the final chaotic numbers are after this match. Little more than halfway through with about 200 ships sunk, with so many building up on the bottom of the ocean floor, some respawning even getting stuck on them, and about 120 planes have been shot down. I will say, most of the deaths from the jet fighter side when watching this could have easily been avoided, but I think the excitement of seeing what these jets were capable of at attempting many dangerous stunts were very exciting to most of the participants, most of which would end in fatality. I love how one of the participants decided to park their jet on the bridge and just watch the event. And down to the last minute before the round ends.
15 minute time span, 365 ships were sunk with 248 jets taken down. Even though I'm pretty sure more than half of those could have been avoided. Hope you enjoyed this and you all stay cool and keep flying and sailing.